I'm gonna talk about money today, which is one of my favorite subjects. Now, in my first year as a Webflow developer in 2022, I made just under $30,000 and wasn't sure if I was going to be able to sustain my career as a freelancer. especially living in San Francisco with some of the highest cost of living in the United States. Luckily for me, 2023 has been a bit more lucrative. Now I was able to almost triple that income from 2022 by doubling down on my niche of teaching programming to Webflow developers. This has helped me stabilize my income by landing some great contracts and also diversify my income by creating four new revenue streams. In this video, I'll share the revenue from each of my income streams in 2023 so that you can get a better idea of what doing business as a freelancer is like. Now, a little disclaimer for those of you who are getting started freelancing or are looking into it is that it can be very lonely. And because of that, you're often comparing yourself to others, especially people who have been doing this for a long time. And I just want to note that this video actually feeds into that. So do your best not to fall into that comparison trap. However, I think this video will be helpful to those who want to start out doing something like I did. If you're new to the channel, my name is Keegan, AKA Web Bay, AKA Mr. Bay. Now I was in the Navy for about 10 years before I left that in search of a job with more freedom. So I thought freelancing in web development would be a good place to start. And I started from zero. I didn't know anything about it and have been teaching myself ever since then. I also took a coding bootcamp in JavaScript for about three months, which gave me a huge leg up in programming. And that's kind of what I do today is I write code on top of Webflow sites to make them do more things than they can do natively in Webflow. I think the first revenue stream that makes sense to talk about here is my freelancer income. Now I'll break down everything by percentage later, but this is the bulk of my income. I make most of my money by doing active work in Webflow with JavaScript and coding things on people's sites. This year I made $81,710 from freelancing. 2023 was a breakout year for me because I was able to get out of the upward grind and start getting clients through Twitter and YouTube and email and referrals and all that sort of stuff. So it's just a much more organic process to getting clients, which if you're on Upwork and you've seen their 20% fee, you know how that can hurt, especially if most of your income is coming through there. This year, I worked with some really fantastic clients. I did some SEO consulting. I had a video that came out about like improvements that Webflow made to SEO, and that led to somebody reaching out to me. They were doing some programmatic SEO, and I gave them templatized versions of different website pages that they could then use for their programmatic SEO project. I also built full websites and did a lot of like GSAP animation integrations, as well as third party API integrations with platforms that you've already heard of like Calendly or uh, eWebinar or different things like that. So a lot of times what I find my clients are struggling with is that they're trying to get something in Webflow that's not native in Webflow. And that's kind of how I market myself is, hey, do you wanna to connect to any third party service? Or do you want to have any custom functionality with a form submit or something like that? So that's where I come in and that's where I've been able to deliver results this year. And I've kind of made a little bit of my name for self in that department, which has been great. So my niche is serving me very well. The next revenue stream is courses. I made $7,294 from my Webflow 201 course, which totally blew my expectations out of the water. I started from zero with zero courses and zero learners and got 277 people in the course this year. So I'm counting that as a huge win. I was thinking I would get like five to 10 people maybe, but you know, I put a lot of work into it and am really glad at how it's performed. Some interesting things about this course are that I had no idea how to price it. A lot of people told me that I priced it too low. I released it at $60 with 50% off. So it was $30 just to get this course. And um, yeah, people were just like, hey, this price is way too low, we would pay more. So that's a lesson learned. I upped the price to $70 now, and I do run some deals now and then, but in general, it's $70. So that also when I release future courses, I can also release them at the right price point. Um, some other things about the course, I did experiment with Google AdWords on this. I wasn't able to really get Google AdWords to make sense for how much I was paying for them. I spent a couple thousand dollars, but wasn't really you know, getting a return on investment. I was losing money from Google AdWords. However, I did notice some really nice bumps in my YouTube traffic because of the AdWords and I was running YouTube ads. So that was kind of interesting, I thought, and I learned a lot from that. I would definitely consider running ads again, especially around Webflow Conf. I'm proud of the course because it took me seven days from start to finish, heads down, nonstop work. I created the assets in Figma and then I showed how to develop it in Webflow, recorded the whole thing, and then edited the whole thing and then created a section on my website where I could release it as well as got a Webflow e-commerce plan and used that. So I just pulled a lot of tools and a lot of knowledge together to get this thing released. 
and then started advertising it on Twitter and around YouTube and places like that. And just people said they really liked it. The course still gets a few purchases per month, which works out really great for me, although it's in need of a bit of a refresh because of Webflow's UI updates, but really everything still holds. It just looks a little bit darker in the new UI. Now, the next revenue stream I'll talk about is YouTube AdSense. I made $655 on it this year and I monetized back in May. So it hasn't been monetized for the whole year. And it took me eight months to go from zero subscribers to monetization. You can see at the start of the year, I started with 829 subscribers. And at the end of the year, I was at 5,399. So pretty good growth there. Nothing going viral or crazy growth or anything like that. Just consistently posting about two videos per week, sometimes one, sometimes more. It just depends on how I'm feeling and what my freelancer schedule is like. So anyways, this is YouTube. Like I said, it's a lot of work for a little payout but it serves as the top of my funnel. So people will watch my YouTube videos, they'll learn who WebBay is, and then hopefully they'll continue to my Patreon or my Webflow 201 course, or they'll clone one of my clonables, and maybe I'll get some affiliate kickback on that. So I really enjoy focusing on YouTube and really want to focus on making my video qualities better because honestly, I'm not the greatest designer and sometimes the videos suck, but I do my best to just really show how to solve a problem in Webflow with code. And I think if I stick to that, that my YouTube will continue to grow and I just don't need to be, you know, overzealous or get too crazy about it. Just keep pushing and keep consistently posting because it's been awesome so far. I really recommend if you're thinking about getting started in YouTube, go ahead and give it a shot. Like. If you scroll to my older videos, it's just me answering people's questions in the forums. So try to lower the barrier of entry to getting started because it is quite intimidating. I see a lot of successful YouTubers and I think that we kind of go on here thinking that YouTube is going to be a great way to make passive income, but it's actually a ton of work. So ask anybody who's more successful than me, there's plenty of them out there. They'll tell you how much work YouTube actually is. This chart is pretty interesting from my YouTube. This shows my views for the lifetime of the channel against my RPM or my revenue per melee or meal. I think it's revenue per meal. Anyways, that's like how much money you make per 1000 views. So you can see here, you know, I was just started back in July of 2022. I don't really consider actually starting until here in the end of September in 2022. And, you know, I was just kind of chugging along for months and months here until things started to pick up quite a bit. And then I finally was able to monetize my channel. So that was great. And I was making an RPM of about anywhere between one to $2. Um, and then nothing really happened until what was this spike? I had like one popular video. I don't even remember what it was. But then we can see when I released the Webflow 201 video, I got quite a number of views from that. So that did really well, like I already mentioned. And then my RPM spiked around Webflow Comp. This is October 7th, October 8th. So I think what happened was maybe Webflow had a big budget and started spending a lot of money on ads. And I'm also seeing a lot of advertising from Wix Studio and competitor Webflow products. So that's really good for my channel because it means people are competing for clicks on ads on my channel. So I've seen the RPM stay pretty elevated, but then drop back down after the new year and it seems to be climbing again. We will see what happens. If you're interested in this type of content, I do monthly reviews actually inside of my Patreon where I get into the nitty gritty of all my analytics and what I'm watching. Even though I'm making very little money from it, it's just fun to see and try to game what people are looking for. With Patreon this year, I made $4,455 and grew my average monthly users from six to about 42. So this was a huge success for me in 2023 but it wasn't until I started actually delivering value to my Patreon that people decided to sign up. Now I had my Patreon back in 2022 and I set it up because my friend Nick, who's also starting a business said, you need a place for people to give you money. And so this is just kind of what I used for a while. I said, hey, look, if you wanna support me, the best way is through Patreon. And it still is actually. So I just got a couple of people who were generous enough, like Tom and Eric and Heather and Ryan, Thank you so much for your support from the beginning. But anyways, it wasn't until I actually released Webflow 201 and I offered a free discount code for Webflow 201 to all my Patreon members that it started to grow. I saw it go from six to 12 pretty much in less than a month. And then when I announced my JavaScript Webflow course, which I'm releasing module by module in Patreon right now, it jumped to above 40 for the first time. So that was really cool seeing growth in Patreon. And as it grows, I'm dedicated to delivering as much value there as I can. So as this becomes more successful, this is where most of my content is going to live, but I still need to be discoverable. I still need to figure out what works in my niche. I have a lot of room to grow, but I think the JavaScript and Webflow course going in there is really cool. The last revenue stream that I'll talk about is my affiliate income, which was $1,956, mostly coming from my affiliate deal with Webflow. 
Now, how this works is that anytime somebody clones one of my clonables and then they go on and either pay for a site plan or sign up for a workspace plan, I get a cut of that. So clicking the links in the description below definitely helps me. And it's just a product that I love. So I'm super happy to be able to have this deal with them. And this is probably my favorite revenue stream because it feels like it's truly passive. I don't have to do anything other than create a clonable and then it exists and people use it and they find help from it. So it's super cool to get people when they sign up to get a payout from this. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. Now, I also have affiliate partnerships with GSAP and Carl's Creative Coding Club. I just really love GSAP. I think their incentive is something like 10% of their pro plan but I actually have earned $0 from that. So hoping to maybe make a dollar or two from GSAT this year because of how much I love their software. Uh, Creative Coding Club, if you don't know, is like a GSAP everything course by Carl at Snorkel TV. He's my favorite GSAP educator. If you haven't checked him out, be sure to check the links below. There will be some affiliate links in there and I'll get a cut. And he is just somebody who you should support. He's always in the forums with GSAP and just helping answer people's questions. And he's just got content on everything. It's the most thorough GSAP content out there. And I was a little bit hesitant at first because I want to release a lot of my own GSAP tutorial content and all that, but I will never reach the thoroughness that he has done. So if you're looking to get started, definitely check that out. Also, Carl's just a great guy. So in summary, here's the total amount that I build in 2023. Keep in mind taxes and all those expenses are not included in here. So this is just revenue and money that has come in. I made $96,080. So almost hit that 100K mark. Not quite, just 4K away, but that is okay. I'm definitely growing from 2022, so this is some great growth for me. Now, off to the right, I've broken down each revenue stream by the percentage, and so we see freelancing is by far and away the bulk of everything at 85%, courses 7.6%, Patreon following up at 46 and then followed by my affiliate and YouTube income below that. So the goal over time is to grow those passive income sources or passive, like Patreon is not passive, YouTube is not passive, but they continue to pay over time as you make the stuff. So I'm going to continue building that and I'm going to continue developing my freelancing skills as well. A number that I kind of keep in the back of my head is what I was previously making in my military career, which was 160K. And that came with a lot of great benefits as well. So that's kind of like my goal reach number. I would love to hit that this year. We'll see if I get there, but if I could make 100K, that would be great and I could survive and even afford a grilled cheese here in San Francisco. If you like this kind of behind the scenes content, be sure to check out my Patreon where I do this on a monthly basis and I break everything out in much finer detail. So you can see that some months I make maybe just a couple hundred bucks, but some months I'm able to bill something like 14 or $15,000 or even more than that. So it just really depends and freelancers have it really tough and managing these irregular income schedules. So that's why I'm putting this out there. If you're getting started freelancing, I want you to know what to expect and hope that it helps you. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video.